Welcome to the channel. And today we are going to talk about mutton fat keratic precipitate. So they are called KPs. So there are three types of KPs. One is acute KPs. The other is old KPs. The acute KPs are discrete and small while old are irregular. And then you've got mutton fat KPs which are bigger in size. And here we've got these mutton fat KPs which are present on the endothelium at the back of the eye. So where do they actually come from? If, if, I, take a, if, I, take, if I make a picture like this of the cornea, this is going to the back of the eye. This is your lens and this is your ciliary body. This is, this is the pars plicata. And this is where the cells are going to come in, in front of the lens. And you've got your iris over here, which separates the anterior chamber from the posterior chamber and these cells are going to come in the anterior chamber and then with time with gravity they deposit on the endothelium so it depends what type of cells we have either it could be neutrophils which are smaller in color but these are bigger and they tell you that the patient has got granulomatous uveitis and granulomatous uveitis as everybody knows is a feature of tuberculosis Sarcoidosis, if somebody's got sympathetic ophthalmitis, that is another feature of granulomatous uveitis. The main thing is they are greasy white. They look like give you a greasy appearance, these uh, metanfate KPs. And they tend to come in different sizes over here. But you can see whatever they do, they run down with gravity and they settle down to the lower part of the cornea compared to the other part. And what else do we see in this patient? The patient seems to have a jet black pupil. The iris is slightly peaked upward over here. If I clear everything, you've got your iris, which is peaked over here. So what does that peaking tell you? That peaking tells you that the patient probably has had cataract surgery. The limbus wound might be here. And there must be some vitreous going outwards as a wick over there, producing that wick over here. So the patient most probably is a pseudophagic patient, which will judge from the cornea from the uh, red reflex. And other important thing you want to see, is this a very active disease? You need to see that the, the ciliary congestion is not very marked over here. So it so looks like it's a low grade inflammation which is happening over here. Let's go and start off the video from start and see what we have in this video. So this is what we are seeing. I'm going to go through a slit lamp examination in which you can see I'm shining light and the light is going to come I'm I put over the light over here and then so that the beam goes over here the so beam falls over here you want to share it and in this area you're going to see cells floating and these cells tend to go like this in circles like this they would go up and then they would go down and then they would go up like this. So that's called a Tyndall effect to which <clears throat> the cells are going in this area. So let's play the video again. And you can see these are present on the endothelium. They are not present on the epithelium, which is very important. Now I went to a higher magnification. Now, if you want to look at this, this is a remnant of the posterior capsule over here. So that means that the IUL probably is there, but it is on the sulcus in these patients in this patient and uh, what you can see over here the ac seems to be deep in uh, in its shape and you want to come up with an oblique uh, examination bring down the light and you can see uh, as i'm holding it i'm bring first i'm scanning the area of the cornea with for the kps and then you come in and uh, you do uh, checking for uveitis and then this red reflex is so important and then looking at the fundus and the vitreous if there's any snowballs in the vitreous and if there's any neuroretinitis in the vitreous or any retinitis uh, birdshot uh, i mean serpiginous keratopathy is something which you're looking for is if you are suspicious of tuberculous uh, uveitis so what do you investigate these patients with um, granulomatous uveitis. Ideally, if somebody's got a first episode of acute anterior uveitis with small KPs, you wouldn't bother and wouldn't do a test systemic because it's a self limiting disease, comes once and that's finished. But mutton fat KP, that is telling you that the patient has had 
uh, inflammation in the eye and that is leading to this area of uh, mutton fat KP formation which you are seeing in this patient. So it's very important to identify these patients with mutton fat KPs and to look for uh, signs of uveitis and systemic disease and especially the blood test which you want to do in these patients number one top of the list is blood complete so you know what type of inflammatory reaction is there neutrophil lymphocyte reaction ESR CRP is very important indicator for TB and sarcoidosis that tells you that the patient has active disease then you want to go on to serum ACE and if sarcoidosis is expected HRCT of the chest is another option which is there but for tuberculosis, we used to rely on Montu's test, but now we tend to go on TB quantiferon gold test, which has got a very high sensitivity and specificity. So you tend to take any sort of material of the, uh, the TB material present in the anterior chamber or in, in, the, in the blood and then amplify it with the PCR and then you get that tuberculon quantiferon gold tuberculin test positive. Other diseases which you look for is autoimmune diseases, any other disease which you want to look for is do ANA or double-stranded DNA. And uh, those are the major investigations you would do, especially in other some cases, you if there's acute anterior uveitis, HLA is very important. And if you're looking for uh, chronic uveitis, then uh, you would uh, do different types of HLA as well. But serpiginous keratop, uh, uh, retinitis along with the granulomatous uveitis is very important. The treatment for this is going to be topical steroids. Maybe you just, just can control with topical steroid. If there's an associated systemic condition, treat that condition with topical steroids. You want to put um, drops to dilate the pupil to break the posterior synechi. And then the other thing which you need is uh, systemic immunosuppression or systemic steroid if it's not settled and the patient has got sarcoidosis then you need to change to other disease but the important thing to remember is whenever you're going for steroids be careful rule out tuberculosis before you go on to treat with systemic steroid because the patient is going to get worse with uh, tuberculosis thank you very much for watching and looking forward to seeing you again on the channel